In this video, guys, we're going to be talking about what skills and technologies you want to learn if you want to get into game development. So keep watching. Let me explain. Here it goes. A's for ambition. Be what I want to be. See past the situation that's in front of me. Doubt is an enemy. All right, today we're going to be talking about tips for new game developers. And we're here with Kate, who's the perfect person because she's just launched her first game on Steam. First question a lot of new game developers might want to ask is, you know, should they be learning a programming language? What programming language would you advise them to start learning? Well, instead of uh, fixating on one language, I would say learn programming in any language because from there on, if you need to, to switch to another language, that's probably much easier than having to learn the concepts of programming itself. So you're saying so good fundamentals. Any, Sorry? Good fundamentals. Yes, definitely. So it, it literally could be anything like Java, even, even if you just start with JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, anything really. And if someone out there wanted to learn game development, are there any basic tools do you think they should start learning? Well, you could look at different game engines because if, if you're a beginner, then it's probably it's best to use uh, some sort of existing engine. So you don't have to build everything, literally everything from scratch because that's a lot of work. Um, and with those engines, you can probably get really simple games or, or simple prototypes out really quickly. And, and most of them have really good tutorials on their site. So, um, I mean, are there any specific um, graphics tools or sound tools do you think would be useful for a new developer? Again, it depends. Well, it depends on your budget and, and on your, on your purpose. Cause there, there are a couple of free tools. Like I know some people use, I, I know that some people actually use, uh, Microsoft paint. <laughs> To, make, to do their uh, graphics or uh, GIMP or or Paint.net or anything, but I'm I'm using Photoshop or there's there's Blender if you want to do uh, 3D or uh, um, Studio Max. 3D Studio. Blender Max. is free, so yeah. So Kate, when you were building your game, did you look at any particular game engines or did you go with developing your own? And what were the pros and cons? We, we opted to use uh, Unity as a basis. So Unity is kind of generic, so it doesn't, um, it doesn't conform to just one genre of game. So you can build basically any sort of uh, game in, in Unity, but you don't have to, again, you, know, you don't have to start from absolute scratch. So you have these tiny building blocks, which you can use and then put together whatever game you like in even in, in 2D or 3D or... See, I think a lot of people think of Unity as that 3D shooter development platform, you know, that Fort, is it Fortnite runs on Unity? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either, but I, a lot of people see Unity as, you know, a 3D platform and you're saying it's good for almost any application, even 2D. Yeah, we did, we made a platformer game once that was completely 2D, we did it with Unity. Our game is 2.5D, um, but yeah, so basically anything. It all depends on your imagination, I guess, and your, your level of, uh, of expertise in game dev. So let's take a brief look at the game that you've created on Unity. I had me seven beautiful geese, but now I only have three. Some deceitful thing steals one every night, and the mister and I cannot catch the thief, however we may try. There is nothing bloody good about this day. You have the money to buy something? I'm selling these fine leather jackets. <clears throat> good day, Master's Geese. <laughs> Tis a ghost or a curse or something. So who are you gonna call? A brave, kind and Truly magnificent young fella. So Kate, I know it's difficult for a lot of indie developers to get the word out there about their game and get people to notice it. How have you gone about your marketing? We look for uh, similar games and the audience of similar games. And I join a lot of Facebook groups and Reddit and all other social media platforms. So that would and be what? Adventure Gamers, Facebook? Um, 
Yeah, there's there's like four four or five adventure gamers, different kinds of an adventure gamers um, groups on Facebook. There's a lot of people who you can follow uh, on Twitter. So you've um, targeted you have... that niche on Facebook and on Twitter. Where else? We have an Instagram account, but I'm 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 not sure how much uh, how much traffic that generates. So it might not be the best place to look. Um, we have we have a Discord server. We where else are we? We uh, I'm posting sometimes uh, to Reddit. Um, what else? Um, now basically. I am looking for um, for streamers because now that we actually have something to show people, mm -hmm. then uh, we are we are trying to chase down uh, streamers so uh, and and ask them to play uh, and stream our demo, and and for that we we actually came up with a little tool that we embedded into our game. So usually the point and click genre is uh, is a single player thing. So there's there's no like we sometimes with my husband we sit together and play one game so we kind of switch control over the game sometimes but we try and try to figure out the uh, the puzzles together so that's kind of fun but uh, but in general point and click adventures is not is not a multiplayer game so um, so we came up with this idea that it could be fun to uh, to streamers and streamers audiences particularly. If if they can, the audience can somehow influence the game that the streamer is playing. Wow! So so we kind of we, we made a little tool. I'm I'm not sure if in, um, are you familiar with uh, Jackbox party games? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's like it's a it's a couch co-op game, and they have all kinds of crazy, usually um, short and funny games. And, and the aim is that you, you get a bunch of people sitting together in a room and then everyone can just join or drop out and then play silly games on a screen. A bit like Mario Party. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, um, it works like that. So you have one, someone starts a game and then everybody else can join from their phone uh, through a website and then you have something on the screen that everyone sees in the same room and then everyone else uh, can input stuff that sometimes they draw or just send in some text or, or do some some uh, things on their phone and then later on they do something with it in the game so we kind of um, implemented something similar so if um, if a streamer for, let's say a streamer has uh, this this special build for the game and then start streaming we have uh now we have a unique um identifier a, a random generated short uh, string and that's gonna be that's displayed in the game so the audience can see it in the video and then they can use their phone or really any browser because it's just a website and they input the, this password and they can connect to the streamer's game and they will see all um the items that are interactable and currently on the screen of the streamer and then they can vote on what the streamer should do and then it's going to be highlighted in the game that sounds like a really awesome and original feature so just to finish off kate i know there's a lot of people out there that are looking to get into de game development what would your top tips be for them start small so your first game is definitely not going to be an MMORPG. Everyone wants to start with that and that's a really, really good idea. It's not going to be the top of the line next shooter. Uh, it could be, but um, the the main point is that know your limits. So if you have, if you're just a solo dev, then you probably have to, you have to focus on the things that you're good at. And, and, and if you need uh, some more people to kind of fill in the gaps where right? you, you you either you either have to learn um, everything or you have to get some you have to get someone who um, who can do it for you the bits that you can do yourself just set your your targets according to um, to your resources don't get too ambitious and keep the scope yeah. small enough to achieve you can you can be ambitious, but then you need to have enough people and enough resources to um, 
to achieve that. Great advice. That's, that's the main thing, yeah. 